All right. All right. Good morning, everybody. How are we doing? Morning. All right. Good morning. So, other than uh, Fabiola, who signed her, got her first buyer brokerage agreement signed over the weekend and is um, uh, preparing to submit her first offer this morning, uh, who had some good stuff happen this weekend? I did, Bill. Okay, go ahead. Tell us all about it. Um, I had a listing presentation yesterday and um, I got the listing and I will send the agreement today and have it listed as coming soon this week. So cool. very Tell excited and they're going to be purchasing. So, All right. Where did that lead come from? Where did that client come from? Um, it's actually a uh, family from, awesome. my awesome. step, from my stepfather. Okay. Congratulations. I've, I've been in the business for almost 17, 16 and a half years. And I have yet to get a referral from either my, well, my mother sent me one. They wanted to pay wanted me one percent. And my father's <laughs> yet to send me one. So good job working the family. <laughs> Thank you. Okay. Yeah, so don't be afraid to go out and talk to people you don't know, because sometimes the family is uh, overwhelmingly <laughs> supportive and sometimes they're, they're not so much. Okay, uh, Fabiola, I, I didn't mean to like, not give you the stage. Why don't you tell us about where that buyer came from? Oh, um, it was from my first open house that I did. It was probably like a month ago, month and a half ago. And like this guy just reaches out like every like two weeks. I don't know. It, I don't know. He's on this thing. Like he wants to check out a couple of houses every two weeks. I'm like, all right. And I'll go. And he was reluctant to sign a buyer brokerage agreement. And the last time I met him, like two weeks ago, um, he actually took it and wanted to read it. So like, okay, that's a first step. That's great. Cause he was like reluctant to sign it the first yeah. time. The second time he like wanted to actually take it home. And then, uh, and I don't know if you guys saw him a PC chat, like he just, I don't know what they, I don't think they really knew what they wanted or that's the impression that I got. But then like we saw the property and they're like, we want this house or we want this townhouse. And so we're going to be submitting an offer soon. So that's awesome. Fabiola. Yeah, Thank you. Congratulations. I love hearing that it was from your first open house. That's really cool. Yeah. Me too. All right, hang on one. Fabiola, how long have you been in business? Um, well, I got licensed end of May, but I don't think I really started doing stuff until the kids went to school like a month and a half ago. <laughs> yeah. So about a month and a half of really working in real estate to get this first this first transaction. Yeah. Fantastic. And you've been hitting it hard, I know. I'm trying. I'm trying. <laughs> Just one one quick comment on the on the um, the open house thing and and how you've communicated with this prospect for the last month or so is I, I find it's really really helpful and I, I suspect you did this um, to ask a question that sounds kind of like you, well first of all you want to know their motivation and their time frame but oftentimes you you may need to say something to the effect of. You know, I want to make sure that your level of urgency or that my level of urgency matches your level of urgency. So I don't want to call you every hour on the hour if you don't want to hear from me, but every month, right? And I don't want to call you every two months if you want to hear from me every month. So help me understand how I can be the best partner for you for this experience, right? What would, mm -hmm. what would be great? What, what, in your opinion, would be a great um, kind of a, a rhythm for how frequently we talk? That way you're setting kind of the, those expectations right off the bat. So um, great job figuring that out and great job on your buyer. Okay, you. anyone else want to share anything? We do have a couple of guests today, uh, Colleen Tyner, uh, Rachel Baxwell, and Angela Alfano. So everyone make sure you're on your best behavior, okay? Good. Okay. <laughs> All right. Um, I'm going to hand, oh, uh, let me just do a tiny bit of housekeeping really fast, and then we're going to hand off the session to Candace, who's going to run everything today. Um, do not forget that, uh, let's see, uh, Friday, I'm sorry, is it, I think it's from 1 to 2.30. It, Andy's going to be teaching the, uh, uh, basically steps towards being a millionaire real estate agent. That's going to be at the Roswell office, so make sure you're, you're paying attention to that. And um, there's a lot of great content in the daily newsletters that are coming from Melody and the leadership team. So make sure you're coming through that list really, really thoroughly. Uh, today at the office, there's the Golden Letter Workshop. So those that are 
uh, participating. Make sure you take good notes and anything that, uh, you know, you, that you hear that's really valuable, please take a moment to, uh, to share it with your peers. And uh, I'll let Candace take over. <clears throat> good morning, everybody. Welcome, Rachel and Angela and everybody. Hi. Um, okay, so I'm going to share my screen. So this is really talking about- Oh, wait, wait, hang you... on. Hang on. Let me give you- Oh, thank you. Let me well, give you permission to do that. People ask, ask those of us who have been in real estate, well, where, like Bill asked this morning to, to Marquia, where did you, where did that family come from? And so, so it's really important to understand how to meet people, how to add context. And so I put together this, I'm going to share my screen here. And I'll post this as well, so you all can have this because there's some resources in it. But, um, so number one is Chamber of Commerce. The Chamber of Commerce job is to promote community interest. In many cases, that's the community, the business community's interest. So the reasons to join, um, because you can become a participant in the community and there's a lot of volunteering um, or fundraising events for city specific organizations. And here's just some of the organizations that are in Roswell. There's the Star House Foundation, the Drake House, the Roswell Arts Fund, Sunshine on a Rainy Day, Roswell Historical Society, NG Foundation, Source Care, Foster Care Support Foundation, Project Lift, Hispanic Scholarship, Giving Point, Orchestra Atlanta, Sky Precious Kids, and Roswell Inc. And I wanted to show you Roswell Inc. because this was very intriguing to me as I was researching. So while she's pulling that up, can I just just take a moment? Look at look at how much effort she put into preparing for today. So thank you. This is <laughs> this is awesome. This I is promise I course. I promise I learn while I'm doing this, and I I get so many ideas. But Roswell Inc. is for latest business news, information, and resources. I'm so sorry, but it is it. That's not about the coronavirus, but it's everything that's going on in Roswell. Um, like here's the registered businesses, here's the number of jobs, resident population, why Roswell, here's business development, how to start a business, register your business, here's get connected, there's um, networking events, there's the state of the city, there's real estate and development outlook. I mean, this might be the place where you find out what businesses are moving to Roswell. And then you can connect with those people that are moving to Roswell and help them find homes. So this one was really intriguing to me. You can get on their email list. They're, they have a newsletter. Um, some of their some of their content is older, so I'm not sure how up to date it is. But they sent me an email right away saying you're confirmed for our newsletter. So anyway, I thought this was intriguing. Some of I mean, the other ones. Hang um, on one one second before you go on. Did y'all catch that? There was this recommendation that you call some of these companies. And, you know, some of some of the larger ones have relocation, um, you know, relationships, but all that can change once they get in front of an awesome, awesome realtor like yourself, right? So there's no harm in introducing yourself, letting them know that you are a, a real estate agent in our community and that you'd love an opportunity to help them and their their people in any way possible. Maybe yeah. it's doing a home buyer seminar, maybe it's receiving um referrals for, for buyers and sellers that are coming in or, le or leaving their organization. Um, I think that would be fantastic. Plus, let me tell you, there ain't many real estate agents that are doing that. So you're going to stand out from the, from the masses very, very quickly by using that strategy. Yeah. And I mean, you can, for instance, um, some of the, some of the, like the Drake house is, a, is for uh, women and children who, who are homeless. Right. And they're, they have such a great, such a great rating. I mean, to be involved in something like that, who knows, maybe those, maybe those women that are homeless that you're, you're actually fundraising for and those children that you're trying to help, um, that, might create, that might create a community for you of people that are gonna be eventually buyers, right? Um, so, and, and plus, I think when you're, when you're working with people that are like-minded, it's, it's just a, makes for a more joyful. And I wanna give a caveat. I'm not saying that for each one of these, um, particular ways to meet people that you should do all of them, but pick one or two, you know, and, and I think that's good. So another reason to join the, the Chamber of Commerce is you create networking opportunities. You're going to get to meet other business owners. You're going to meet a lot of realtors there. Um, they also sometimes have free or discounted entry to expos or conventions, and you might have access to mailing lists of those who might be interested in what you're doing. You, you'd probably be the first to hear about, like if you were at the Chamber of Commerce, you probably were one of the first people to hear about the plans for Avalon, right? That's, that would have been valuable to know. Establish authority. 
add to your business, that's reason number three, um, you add to your business credibility by being a member. When you can say that your business or you are a member of the Chamber of Commerce, a lot of people look on that very, very favorably. Studies have shown that. And reason number four is you can learn from other business owners. Show up if you're a new agent and watch how other, oh, I can't spell collaboration. I'll correct that. But show up, um, show up and find out what other realtors are doing and how they're showing up in the Chamber of Commerce. Um, and other businesses as well, like every business, every, I remember Gary Keller saying, every single business is in the business of lead generation. So you can collaborate with other business owners and find out how they're doing their lead generation. Um, so another way you can meet people is professional uh, networking groups. Let me just go to here. And I'll post this so you have all these resources. Can you see this if I drag it over or do I need to reshare? No, it's good. Okay. So here's present deals for investment. All, our, all entrepreneurs rise. Um, what fund syndicators welcome in real estate market analysis. Make your own rules. I mean, any one of these you can join. Um, sometimes they're virtual and sometimes they're in person. But Meetup has a lot of different networking opportunities. Sometimes there is just a, I think there's one on here that's just a, a business networking opportunity. And that's all it is. All right, can um, I make a comment about that? Yep. Okay, so um, I, I was a part, uh, many years ago, I was a part of a group called Power Core. It's basically like a networking event or networking organization where they only have like one realtor in each one and they have one lender and one insurance person and all of that. And um, it was a great experience. But one of the things that I learned in there was kind of counter to what I uh, would have normally thought. A lot of times people will go into these meetings with this idea of like, hey, I'm just going to go vomit real estate on everyone that I see in front of me, right? Here's my card. Here's my card. Here's my card. And then they leave and they think they did a bunch of work. And in fact, they just annoyed a bunch of people, right? So when you go to these functions, you've got to, got to, got to understand that it's about them. Figure out how you can help them and figure out how you can, what, what, what is unique about their world or their business or their per their personal life, right? So that you can write them a handwritten note so that you can send them a video text and, and reference something that you talked about. Oh my gosh, it was so nice to hear about your daughter, you know, getting into Georgia Tech uh, and studying biology. I, I'm sure she's going to love it. You know, I, I, I love the way, you know, the, the mission behind your organization and I'd love an opportunity to support it however I can. It was just so good to know you or to meet you, right? <clears throat> Rather than saying, hey, I'm a realtor. Call me if you need anything right? You want to make sure that when you go to these functions, it's about them, okay? Thank you'll, you saying, you'll, you'll follow thank you up saying. with some drippings of how I can help you from a real estate perspective, but at that meeting, it's about them. Ask them a bunch of questions. Thank you for saying that, hear. Bill. Go ahead. We can't hear the last bit. We couldn't hear Bill. He went silent. Oh, oh. So what I was saying basically is when if you're going to go to these kind of networking functions and business, you know, community events and that kind of stuff, you want to make sure that your focus is on the other person, right? Asking the other person a lot about, you know, how long have they lived in the area or how long have there has there been a business been in business or, you know, things about them rather than just being in your face real estate. Hey, you want to know anyone that wants to buy or sell real estate? Come and call me. And then you walk away. That is not effective. Make sure that an effective networking function is figuring out about them, the listener. And then you leave the networking function with a bunch of people's business cards where you know something specific about them or their business that you can follow up with in the Thank future. Thank you, baby. All about them. Absolutely. I really appreciate you saying that because having gone to a number of networking events, I can tell you that when you walk in, it's, it's, it can be a, a it can be an environment where everyone is just wanting something from you, right? They just want something from you. They're like, oh, let me tell you about my business, da 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 da. But if you are the person that goes in and you're the one who asks the most questions and you're the one who shows the most interest, it it, it you separate yourself. And I still have relationships from, gosh, ten years ago when I was doing networking. I just had dinner with a, a friend that I made from there and. Yes, she's very, she married very wealthy. And yes, her husband has best friends who are realtors, but who cares? I still love her and uh, get to go to dinner with her. And I don't, I don't care about that. It was a relationship that was made. And yes, I have made relationships in networking that ended up in business. So um, the other thing is that 
not every single person in that networking group, of course, this is, this is kind of um, obvious, but you're not gonna connect with every single person. So focus on the people that you make connections with and pour into them, provide value for them. I mean, it might be an idea for their business. I talked to somebody recently who she's getting her engineering degree and I asked her what she was doing. And she said, well, I don't know. I'm, you know, I can have a lot of different ways to go. And I said, well, you might also consider getting your women owned small business designation and, and look into government contracts. And she got all excited about that. And I bet she'll be a client one day, So we'll see. Um, okay, personal networking. Now this is just like fun. I mean, you get a group of friends that get together regularly for, for lunch, you go to museums, you go shopping trips, book clubs. Senior, I know my, my husband used to meet a group of guys at Barnes and Noble and they could discuss politics all day long because I don't let him do it at home. <laughs> and uh, he, he just had the best fun. He would come home so energized. So um, anyway, you can do something like that as well. I, I have a personal opinion that lead generation can be fun. And this is one of the one of my favorite ways. I'm part of a book club and, and I just love those ladies. Serve on boards and committees. This is also lending to your credibility. Become visible as a community-minded business owner. And here's some of the, here's if you want to serve on the board of the city. I'll show you this. You can, you, here's the application process. So you just, and there's different different uh, committees you can serve on. The Board of Zoning Appeals, ooh, that might be an interesting one to know about. If something is getting re, rezoned for commercial or something is getting rezoned for a big development that's coming, construction, board of adjustment, design review, all of these are kind of real estate related. Um, Downtown Development Authority, Historic Preservation Planning Commission, ooh, Recreation Commission. I, I love all these. So you can serve, and sometimes they do have a waiting list, but um, sometimes they do have a waiting list. And if I were going to do this, I would probably research how to fill out an application to become a, a, a city of Roswell volunteer on the board. But when you can put that on your resume or in your, in your uh, about me page, that lends credibility as well. Uh, Toastmasters. Everybody knows about Toastmasters and it's not just about overcoming a fear of speaking. It's about building confidence, leadership, and you're also going on that journey with other people who are learning and growing as well. So Toastmasters, every, every, every community has a Toastmasters. And the other benefit is that they meet regularly. So you get, to, you get to build those relationships. Volunteer, do good in the world and meet people who do as well. I, I put in here and they took it out, but these are my kind of people because I know if I'm working with somebody that I've met who, who is a volunteer more than likely, that's gonna be a, a, a client that I want referrals from because they're gonna be people that I enjoy working with. And here's some different um, organizations where you can um, find, up, find some oppor opportunities to volunteer. Um, you can also volunteer at your school. I think you can do that now, right? Volunteer to help. Those of you who I mean, are moms with kids in schools. At the very least, you can call an offer yeah. yeah, I was going to say, we have like a preschool mom's team. There's no more like class mom. It's like a, it's like a group of women now or that handle that stuff, at, at least at our school. Wow. So that would be a powerful way to meet people and build connections. And you've got something in common. That's powerful. Pets. Okay, walk your, uh, and I wanted to say about uh, being on the board, there's all kinds of different boards. It doesn't have to be the city. I once acted as director of exhibitions for the Portrait Society of Atlanta because I'm an artist and I, I wanted to do that position. It was totally volunteer, but it sounded, when you say that people are like, whoa, really? <laughs> and so, um, so anyway, you can, you can just be on the board of just about any organization. It doesn't have to be the city. <clears throat> um, anybody have any comments or questions so far? Okay, pets, oh my goodness, walk your dog and meet people. You don't have to limit it to your neighborhood. I used to take my St. Bernard's into other neighborhoods and boy, were they showstoppers. I could meet all kinds of people. Also parks, you meet people in parks. I'm one of those people and I know you've been one of those, you've seen those people who every time there's a dog around, I don't see the people, I see the dog, but oh, it's a great conversation starter, right? So um, if, if people let me pet their dogs, I always pet their dogs. Also, if you've got a if you're a cat person, they've got those strollers now that are made for cats. They've got the mesh over the front. So if your kitty's an indoor kitty, you can give them the 
you know, give them a present and take them outside. And also that would be pretty novel to see somebody walking a cat and that's attention. So you're, you, you have a way for people to say, is that a cat in there? I mean, have, have you seen those little strollers with, for the little dogs? Has anybody seen those? Those are, those yeah, are, I, I, mean, I actually see people walking their dogs like that all the time. <laughs> Don't you just want to know who they are? Like, really? I mean, I just think that's fascinating. So online social media, this one is a no brainer. Stay active in forums and groups, show up regularly with positive or interesting content or responses. Um, okay, one, one more thing on that. It's been a while since we've said this. Just remember that you guys have the, um, you have the, the freedom to say or do whatever you want online. And yet the rest of the world has the freedom to decide if they wanna do business with you based on what you say or do online. So my advice to you is just be um, positive and uh, not overwhelmingly controversial. And yeah, and, and, as, and with regards to your photos as well, um, you know, I, I kind of think of, um, I think of Facebook as PG. <laughs> and that's how I want to show up in Facebook as PG. Fam, family and, you know, kids could look at it and there'd be no big deal. So right. I've seen some, I've seen some really, um, interesting photos on Facebook. Um, okay, so fitness and sports, you can join a league. And Ryan, you play tennis. I think Peggy Connors plays tennis. Uh, there's pickleball for people like my age. I think that's where tennis players go to retire is pickleball. You can, <laughs> <laughs> you can join a class, yoga, dance, exercise, um, walking groups or start a nature walk group. You could hike the Appalachian Trail. You don't have to do the whole thing all at once. You can just go get a group of people and hike for a, a period of time. My idea to hike the Appalachian Trail is to only go in the spring when the weather's still nice and then in the fall when the weather's nice and, and do a little bit each time. Uh, there's kayaking groups, there's scuba diving groups in Georgia. And here's, here's a site that I found as well uh, that I thought was pretty interesting. There's all kinds of ways to have fun and lead generate. Look at this, the hiking lead, hike Georgia. We hike for fitness, backpacking and kayaking adventures, hiking adventure, she hikes and bikes. <laughs> oh, biking is another one. Uh, Blister sisters hiking, fur friends hiking and trail adventures, Atlanta group dog walks and hikes, lady entrepreneurs hiking group. That might be an interesting one. WOC trail run and hike. I mean, there's just all kinds of different ones that you can join. And they all look like so much fun, don't they? And grid, by the way, Grid North Atlanta, Atlanta North, that's Tom and Joanne Curtin's um, uh, group for wealth building. They, they have uh, their virtual meetings, but they continually talk every month about ways to, to build wealth because they actually have walked the walk. They've taken that hike. Um, there's also the recreation centers, and this is a great place to meet people. So for instance, if you wanted to uh, target active adults, the Roswell Adult Recreation Center you could volunteer to teach. Well, I'm going to get into that later. But um, anyway, just lots of ways to, to meet up with fitness and sports. Hobbies, finds a class or group that shares your interest. You meet regularly. Um, and that's the benefit. You want to find a hobby where you can meet regularly. But here, look at all these different ones. Blacksmithing, coffee and canvas. That one sounds fun. Learn how to make wine at home. Wooden pen turning, sign making. Bandsaw basics. I mean, just anything you can think of that you want to learn, you can do. And and nothing would stop you from starting one of these. If you have a specific hobby and you don't see that there is a uh, appears to be a community for it, then nothing's stopping you from starting that community. And by the way, when you interact with people like women entrepreneurs, these are people that more often than not, their businesses depend on these types of relationships and referrals and introductions. So they're already in the mindset of supporting other people's businesses. Absolutely, absolutely. Um, so take a class, um, learn a new skill, whether for business or personal. You know, like the, the SBA has classes all the time on different things for building your business or learning your business. But you can, you can find classes that meet more than once. You can learn everything from computer skills to glass blowing. And here's, um, this was a home show I wanted to show you. And I wanted to bring this up. Um, so this is the Recreation Parks Historical and Cultural Affairs Department, Oop. but this is the program guide for spring. There'll be one out for spring 2022, uh, but all these different, just, 
I mean, different things that are going on. And I brought this one up because I think there's something about active adults in here that I wanted to share with you. Um, there's a fishing derby, the family race, the Easter hunt, tea with Be Beatrix Potter. Here it is, active adults. So the, act, the adult recreation center talks all about that. You could, you could volunteer to teach a class here, right? Um, anyway, a great way to reach out if that's your, if that's your um, niche. <clears throat> So um, let's see, and, and the, I, I put on here that most of the classes are past schedule on this site, but, but there's still great content and it's a site that you'll wanna keep up for next year. Say yes more often and we get so busy, but if, if a friend asks you to go for coffee, just go. If you're asked to host something, say yes. Be open and flexible because you never know what's gonna come up. And, and find- and another, another thought on that. I hope you don't mind me chiming in every once in a while. I love when you chime in. That it, that's another forum where you need to make sure that you are the focus is on the other person, right? We have a tendency to want to just talk about ourselves all the time, and um, for the most part, people don't really like that, right? So be curious and ask them what they're experiencing now and how work and family and you know their business and all that stuff is. And there'll be plenty of time. There'll be an opening for you at some point to bring up business if it's appropriate. But focus on them. Absolutely. Thank you, Bill. Find your place and show up. You know, you don't have to work from home. You can work at a coffee shop. You can work at a sandwich shop. Become a regular so they know you. When people see you there all the time, it makes you seem like the go-to agent for the community. People, you know, if people see you, you'll start, it'll start off with, hey, how are you? And then you can start the conversation. Just get to know people because there'll be other regulars there too, right? But find a place where you want to work. Um, one of the things that my husband taught me was he, he said when he was in business that he would go to a restaurant and he would pay the, he would go to a nice restaurant because that's where we would have his lunch meetings and he would pay the concierge a hundred dollars and he would say, make sure we have a great table. I'd like that table over there. And, and, you know, I'm going to be bringing a lot of business people in here. That concierge lifted him up so much. It was, Hey Ron, your table is ready. It's so nice to see you again. Come on back. You know, he just treated him because he had, he had built that relationship and yes, he had paid him, but that was, something that was valuable. Um, spiritual groups, and I wanna, I wanna give a caveat here. This is really just about sharing common interests and beliefs. Um, a lot of places of worship have small groups. I'm gonna say about everything in here, be authentic. You know, if it's not your thing, don't show up just to get business. Show up if that's your, if that's your wheelhouse. Uh, you all know what I'm saying here, be authentic. Neighborhood groups, Ryan does this, I know. Host a, a, you can host a card party regularly. There's a neighborhood, there's a, a realtor who moved from my sister's neighborhood, but she just constantly had things going on where she was like, come on over to my house, I'm hosting a card party, I've got it every week. Um, she hosted events at the clubhouse. She would get a tent and have a barbecue out there at the clubhouse. Um, she posted in the group chat regularly. Um, you could offer giveaways for your neighbors to answer survey questions. Like, you know, for instance, um, my coach right now is having me because I'm identifying my niche and my, my coach says, rather than think you assume everything about your niche, find people that are within that niche and ask them survey questions like why, why for instance, uh, for instance, if mine is um, families that are upgrading, what caused you to want to upgrade? What was the scariest thing about that? What is the thing you're looking forward to most about that? And develop some survey questions to ask them and then offer a giveaway so you can learn about the people in your neighborhood and maybe what's going on. Be visible in your neighborhood, get out there, show up when there's things going on, providing value and fun. Send CMAs, you can offer to set your neighbors up on auto emails for real estate in the neighborhood. Everybody, my brother and sister, my brother-in-law and sister yesterday were like, could you tell us about the two homes that just sold in our neighborhood? And I was like, I sent you guys up on an auto email. Just go look at your email, but they wanted to print it out. Everybody wants to know what's going on in their neighborhood. All right. One thing on that. Wouldn't, wouldn't you have looked kind of silly had you not had any awareness of what that property was or when it was listed or what it sold for, right? So there's an expectation that you as an agent are pretty familiar with the, the areas that you intend to work. Yep. So I believe it's important every single day to, to take a look at the marketplace. Don't be stumped when somebody says, oh, wait, what's the deal with that house around the corner? And you're like, I don't know, yeah. right? Yeah, and, and I'll just quickly show, um, 
you know, you can search your neighborhood every day on FMLS. You can see FMLS now, right? Yep. Okay. If I go to Remind right here, I've, I've shown this to you before, but um, if you want to see what's going on in your neighbor, not your particular neighborhood, but your zip code. Come on, Remind. There we go. You can scroll down to the bottom of the page and you can look at the market pulse and you can put in the zip code where you want to where you're interested in and it'll show you kind of what's going on. I like to do the last seven days because if you do last today or yesterday, you don't get the absorption rate and I like to know what the absorption rate is. What's the so, absorption rate, Candace? The absorption rate is the number of days of inventory that we have that if we sold everything on the market, we would be out of inventory. So in this case, in three. 30076, we have 16 days of inventory. So what that tells, tells all of us is that we need more homes on the market and it's really competitive right now, right? right. And a balanced market, by the way, is between six and seven months and we're at two weeks. Two weeks, yep. Okay, open houses, buyer seminars and online leads. So Fabiola, you got a buyer, a BBA sign in or putting in an offer from an open house. Uh, Drew is building his business on open houses. He's taken it over the top with, he's got a big flag now with his face on it. Very, he's, he's had 25 people stop at his last open house. He spent some money on signs. So he's, he's really going all out for open houses. And he's got uh, probably three transactions that are either closing this month or next month from open houses as a new agent. I think you got to look into the signs. I was like, those, that's pretty massive and big. Definitely attention grabbing. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, I'm partnering, by the way, next weekend, next Saturday, I'm partnering with one of our vendors who, uh, uh, Jonathan Stevens, who's sponsoring a barbecue and a videographer for me. And, um, and Drew is going to partner with his big signs. So um, if you want to come out and eat some barbecue, I'll have chicken and beef hot dogs. And um, hopefully the videographer then is going to take out all the noise and put in beautiful music that show what a great entertaining home this is. So that's you, the goal from it. Can you post uh, some more info on that, Candice? I the, sure will. I, I absolutely will. Thank you. Shows and expos. I just want to say, did anybody go to the home show this weekend? The Atlanta home show? Well, I did. I did. I went with my husband. And guess who I saw there? Top 20% agent Heather Hare and her mom. And guess who picked up a buyer and a seller from the home show? You. Uh, no, Heather here. She got there before me. <laughs> <laughs> everybody I talked to, everybody I talked to was from a different city. But guess what? I've got their cards and I'm going to follow up with them because they might have somebody who's moving here or they might, you know, who knows? Lives change. So, so home shows. Yes. Um, vendors at shows. Oh my goodness, they just are so happy when you walk up and they get to demonstrate what they're talking about. It's a little torturous for somebody like me who doesn't have any S because they like to go in the weeds with the details. And it, it's, it's, I'm just like, la, 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 la. But I still listen and I still will engage with them and find out. I'll try and engage with them then on a more human level. Like, you know, I'll say, that's a great product. How did you get started in it? And what do you love most about selling it? I try to engage with them. Um, but anyway, so... Um, then get cards, stay in contact. Like I said, even if they don't live here, they might be a great referral source. Maybe somebody in their family is moving here. And I love this. Be nice to our local heroes. You can take goodies to the fire station. You can take a box of donuts over there. Um, Joanne Curtin and her son recently posted on their Facebook page that they went over and cleaned up the grounds. They cut the shrubs and they, they worked on the interior of a firehouse to help them with their 9-11 memorial. That was just giving. I mean, that was just, I thought that was really lovely send thank you notes to a group of heroes for their service, buy groceries to make a dish and deliver with a recipe card. Um, you can offer co-branded material that talks about loans available for heroes. You could volunteer to do something they need or surprise and delight. Ask them to hold a CPR class for a group in your neighborhood or other group you're a member of. Most instructors in exercise have to be cert CPR certified. When I taught jazzercise, I was a CPR instructor. So I would go to doctor's offices and I would go to um, fitness places and I would help them keep their certifications current. And it's not that difficult to do. And guess what? It's a really great skill to have. Um, so, so that's something you could go over and help the firemen keep their certification or the, the nurses and doctors who need to keep their certification. 
So here's one as well, and this is my last one. Um, how are we doing on time? Good. Offer to teach a class at a senior activity center uh, or, or just an activity center. You could teach for kids as well. You could teach something like easy cooking for seniors uh, co-host with a financial planner because I can promise you just about every senior has the worry in the back of their mind of is their money going to last and you could host an app class and I found this I thought this was kind of cool 60% of all seniors have smartphones I'm one um, so here's just some different ones um, medicine these are different apps that you could help them install on their phones and talk with them about how to work manage your medications um, remember where you parked huh. um, Magnifying glass and flashlight. This is for reading a menu in a dim restaurant. I can well remember my uncle Warren going, I don't even know what I'm eating. I can't see it. So he could have had this happen and been able to enjoy his meals more. Um, connect with family and friends. This is Facebook Messenger. We all know about that, but some people don't. Take charge of retirement planning. Here's, a, here's a, a, an app for that. Good RX, save money on prescriptions. Um, Snapfish, get the photos off your phone. Help them understand how to get their photos. I know, I know, I feel like every time I have a phone that dies, I lose the photos that were in there. Well, now I've learned to upload them to the cloud so that I can access them. But a lot of people don't know how to do that. Audible, I love Audible. I listen to it every morning on the way in. Never forget a password again. I want that one whether I'm a senior or not. Um, and this one is Words with Friends too. This is a, a game that you can play with family and friends, a video chat and then listen to music and podcasts, Spotify. So that would be a fun thing to teach as well. You can get creative with your classes. Um, you can, if you have a, 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 like you knit or you, something that you do particularly well, you could, you could offer to teach that class. And the same for kids, same for regular adults. So any questions or comments so far? I have a couple observations. Okay. The first is, um, Again, thank you for preparing this. This is a phenomenal resource. Um, the other is that we sometimes think that lead generation has to be something that we, it's like the, the, the thing we have to tolerate in order to be in sales. And you, it, it's actually the exact opposite, right? You can go, you can go do whatever you, whatever makes you excited, right? Play tennis, go to reading clubs, you know, hang out in the, you know, old folks home, whatever it is and meet plenty of people and that's going to be enough to support your goals most likely right so lead generation can be fun that's that's probably my biggest takeaway here um just as a you i don't know if i'm stealing your thunder here but the the two things that are coming into my mind right now are th this is um this is only step one right the meeting people is step one step two is getting them into your database, uh, segmenting them in some capacity, right? Uh, with, with notes or different groups or whatever. So you can do, uh, you know, marketing messages to certain people, it, you know, if necessary. And then some form of a unique follow-up, right? How do you make sure that you can capitalize on these relationships as they're being built, as opposed to just like having a great conversation and then there's no follow-up or there's no system. So, um, always be thinking about what is the way that I can uniquely follow up with these people. Um, a great, you know, two probably most popular ones are handwritten notes, right? And video text. Um, th those are, those are probably the, the top couple things that, that pop into my mind. And, you know, I, and I, the other thing that, that occurs to me is almost every single one of these, except for maybe showing up, you know, finding your place to work, your coffee shop to work, Almost everything is coming from a place of giving um, and, and providing value or sharing with a sharing, a, a, a sharing an experience with someone. All those kinds of things build bonds. So, um, and there's, this is just the tip of the iceberg of ways to meet people. I mean, just, there's, there's just so many ways. So, and I know some of you have ideas about how you're meeting people. So just share those in the WhatsApp chat because everybody's, it's kind of like when you're, you know, if you're single, you're like, how do you meet somebody? And then there's the people who are like, what? I know how to meet like tons of people. It's the choosing is the hard part. Um, so, so this, these are just some ideas to get you started. 
Any other questions, observations? Anybody, well, does anybody see anything that they think they want to start with? I'll share something. So um, I use those home show tickets and offered it to my subdivision. And I met like a whole bunch of probably like seven or eight uh, families wanted it. And I talked to like a good, probably like when I was dropping him off, um, like three or four families and I'm meeting uh, three of them for breakfast, so like each different weeks. And my neighbor across the street, she's like, oh, well, um, I think my parents are moving here. So I'm going to need you, you know, like I need, I'm going to be needing your help. Um, and then it's just interesting how it's like kind of, you know, just building these relationships. And it's like, you know, generally like it's fun meeting people and just getting to know them. <laughs> it's not like a, a hassle. Like I thought that was, you know, I thought it was fun. Y'all watch out. This is your next superstar up here. <laughs> That's Let's exactly see. what you okay. should be doing. That's exactly what you should be doing. Great job. Yeah. You know, anybody else? Does anybody hey, think so, you're gonna go ahead? I was just gonna say, hey, sorry, I stopped while y'all were talking to meet a neighbor that was walking her dog and <laughs> her number. So you're Great. walking with her, and I missed <laughs> what she just said. That's so, a very well, valid we're... excuse. That's a very yes. valid excuse. She was actually describing a situation that what you essentially just did, which is <laughs> intentionally getting into relationships with you know, the people that you're, you're in relationship with. She basically took the home show uh, tickets and, and offered them uh, to her neighbors and has already scheduled three or four breakfasts that she'll be having over the next couple of weeks to, to meet more, you know, to get to know her neighbors more intentionally. And uh, one looks like that might have a, a referral coming to her as a result. So you guys are doing the exact same thing. Congratulations, that's awesome. And by the way, by the way, the home show tickets, even though only one of my past, it's one of my database decided to use them. It was a touch. It was a touch yes. to everybody in my database that I reached out to and said, I've got tickets. I've got this many tickets. The first people who raise their hands can have tickets and I'll be glad to drop them off. And so I was able to have with several people, probably two or three exchanges about that. Hey, I have a question around that. Sure. Um, how do you efficiently reach out to, you know, the masses to offer um, something like that? What's the most efficient way to do it? Well, you could do a mass email in command, <clears throat> but I, in my estimation, Greta, I like to personalize the email and say something about the family or the person that I'm reaching out to, um, whether it's by text or email. And I have different people who prefer different ways to, to be contacted. So if they've texted me a lot, I'll just text them back. If they've emailed me, I'll email them back or if I just happen to know. But I don't, I find the touches so important that I don't necessarily need to automate it. Yeah, and, and what you could also do is, um, I was going to say the same thing as Candace did, but you, you could also use tags to say like neighbors or VIPs or something like that. So yeah, very quickly, you can get a, a message out to a small group of people, right? So, um, you know, I, I've actually suggested kind of the opposite previously to what I'm about to say. Um, I, I think sometimes we can get a little in the weeds with like micro tagging everyone, like this person loves poker, but hates sports, right? We need a tag for those people. Um, uh, yet, yet it might be helpful if you intend on having, you know, messages to certain groups, like, hey, this is my book club. This is my, you know, sports fans, right? You could even do that on, on WhatsApp too, and just create some synergy with your uh, peer groups that are all representative of some, some, some kind of thing, right? This is like the, the PTA moms or whatever. I'm just curious, is anybody thinking they're going to join the Chamber of Commerce? Yeah, Candace, I was going to say that's that's for me, like my back on Long Island, I ran a business on Main Street um, and I was actually part of that Chamber of Commerce. And the things that that did for that business were astronomical. So Fantastic. that's definitely something that I want to focus on. Fantastic. Thank you, Melissa. Yep. yep. Cool. Anyone else have any any thoughts? Any, any comments? Was this helpful today? 
Yes, very. Sure. Sometimes yeah, that, definitely like, gave us some new ideas. Yeah, yep. sometimes I mean a lot of this perhaps seems seems kind of uh, um, you know kind of kind of typical, so to speak, right? Like we don't necessarily need to be told this, but um, I, I think that highlighting some of these very specific things kind of opens our eyes to things that we we would have never we would have never thought of, right? Um, one thing I'm it's in here uh, in a place or two, but making, you know, getting, getting into relationship with people that own businesses, right? They have huge client list. They're experiencing pretty much the same things you are. I mean, every business is the same. It's where am I finding my people? How am I servicing my people? And how am I communicating with my people? Every business has the same three issues, right? And so a lot of the, the tools and models and systems and tech that you're using for your business, uh, like let's say a budget model or an economic model or an organizational model or you know, what the GPS is or any of these kind of things can be applicable for any business owner. So don't be afraid to, to share some of the tools that you've used to build your business and organize your business with other people. And remember that the, the, at the heart of all of this is coming from contribution, right? Is making sure that you don't want the reputation of, oh, whenever Bill comes in the room, he's going to want to talk about himself in real estate. So when he comes, I leave, right? You want them to say, oh my gosh, whenever Bill comes in the room, like he always tells a fun story. He always asks great questions. He always sees what he can do to help me. I think I want to hang out with that guy. Yeah. And I just, I just Googled Roswell, Georgia, small businesses. So there's a whole bunch of information in here that um, where you can, you know, here's, here's, what did I just see? Best locally owned businesses in Alpha. Oh, that's Alpharetta. Um, we, we sell homes in Alpharetta too, don't we? Yeah, we do, but I wanted to focus on Roswell today, but yeah, here's roswellgov.com. Um, there's best businesses in historic Roswell. So you could, you could definitely start building some relationships with these. And you know what? I want to say this. If three or four of you go and build relationships with these businesses, that's okay. There's, there's plenty to go around. Mm -hmm. um, I, I don't want you to feel like, oh, if so-and-so is doing it, I can't. I think it's going to be, you, if a business has more than one person in the business, you know, there's just plenty to go around. So, so have a more abundant mindset than a mindset of lack and scarcity is what I'm trying to say. Per perfect uh, idea there. That's exact. That's a great comment. All right. Okay. Anyone else have any thoughts, questions, complaints, feedback? Is Any that a document that you made, Candace? Are you gonna put it in the chat? Yep, I'll put it in the PC help but on PC help WhatsApp. Great, thank you. I'll, and I'll uh, take it from there and put it into the into the uh, Google Drive. So again, thank you, Candace, for all your efforts and and preparing today. Um, we are excited to see those that are coming into the Market Center today for the Golden Letter. And as always, if we can help you in any way, uh, we look forward to that opportunity. So you guys have an awesome day. Thanks, Bye, everybody. Too. Thanks for being Bye. here. Bye. Thank you, Bill. Thank you, Candace. Thank Bye. you.